sometimes you need a friend. Not the ones that just show up and don't put nothing in. You know the ones that lend their hand and want to see you win. When you come up on that lick, make sure you cut them in. And then, huh, sometimes you need a foe. Want to keep your eyes open, keep you on your toes. You know the ones that want to keep you where you've been before. But I can't go. No, I can't go. And whoa, huh, sometimes I need a check. Not the sneakers, but the ones that make you watch your step. You know, I sat down with my accountant, he said, I got good news and I got bad news. Okay. I said, what's the good news? He said, the good news is you made a lot. Today, it's Madden NFL football. It's week 12 of the NFL on EA Sports. Cincinnati Bengals. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. The beat goes on, doesn't it? A perfect 10-0 to start... That's complete. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Oh, we're always talking about the athleticism we see from these guys on the field. How about the intelligence as well? He recognized that there was a screen pass on that one, broke off his pass rush, and got back to tackle the running back. That's great scouting and great reaction. Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. The Browns send out their punter now. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6'4 quarterback. I like this guy. And the reason I do, he tends to stay on an even keel. Doesn't let too much ruffle him. He will manage the game the way it needs to be managed, take what the defense gives him, and then he can strike at times. Had a touchdown pass. Yes, he had an interception last week, but he found a way for his team to win. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. The numbers for him from a week ago, 18 carries, 61 yards, and a touchdown. I'm so glad you asked for a couple of offensive linemen to talk to before the game because they told us that in last week's contest, everything was clicking. Didn't matter whether they were doing gap scheme, zone scheme, power, whatever. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. 
You've caught plenty of games in your career. Do you believe in momentum, my man? I do, and I think we're seeing it right here. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The run that he's been on. How about that? Three sacks in a game a week ago, and another one right here. Oh, he's feeling it in a big way. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. throw here out of the gun fighting his safety valve here that's complete and he'll get it up here this time to the 21 three yards all they could muster there and it'll bring up fourth down what hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches i think we just saw that on display right there got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield the Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Brings up second and a yard. The last run got nine. That leaves them with second and a yard. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 11 yards there, first down. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. And he'll give it here to his running back. And not able to break away this time the as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Take him down right at the line of scrimmage. They're going to look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. So they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. And one. Now a handoff here to his running back. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This will be a critical call. The field goal unit's going to stay put on the sideline. They're going to go on fourth down here. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. The running back. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Second and 11. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got it complete. Seven yards on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. Makes it third and four. He'll look to throw. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. First and goal at the nine-yard line. So 
first and goal from the nine-yard line. Let's go, Back to throw. This will be caught at about the five. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns have taken the early lead. It's up and through to make it 7 0 Browns. So that one a pretty time consuming 10 play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. Fielded right around the 8. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Bengals take over first and 10 at their own 28 yard line. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. And let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> Number 38, the ball carry. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Two yards on the pickup. It's second. Looking to throw. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard strike. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return and that will come the offense as they take over so here are the Browns to take over they've got the lead yet again in this ball game with their winning streak right now sitting at 10 on play action they'll throw and he's taken down but able to slip across the 35 first play of the drive going for 14 and a first down and that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. To number 27. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he gets this one across midfield for the first down to the 46. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. He was solid last week, over 100 yards in their victory on the ground. They want to get that going again. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not necessarily the same, but they want it to be, right? What they saw last week on the ground, they want to see in this game as well. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 46. 
And to give this time to the tailback. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. Behind the chain, second and 12. Now a throw here, hold in. That catch good for five. It's third down. To number 82. It's a gain of five. Brings up third and seven. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from there. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And a bit of a daunting task here for this offense as they'll start out at the one-yard line. I guess you could easily say there's a whole lot of real estate in front of them if they want to achieve their goal, which is get to the other end zone. And 99 yards to go if they want to do just that. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Bengals. They'll set up a throw. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he takes this way down, deep into Cleveland territory. A big play there on the catch and run. 66 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That is caught at the seven. And the Bengals are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions. In the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly. And now first and goal, expect them attack right here on this play. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Yes. Touchdown from six yards away. And the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Now the try here for the point after. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So all even at 7 now as they kick it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't turn it over. 
right? You're giving it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now we got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something Bob's to be gained from it. Out to his left. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The quarterback sack. Well, let's see here, Charles. He was sacked six times last week. Now a first quarter sack. What's going on in his mind? Well, he's thinking to himself, five offensive linemen. I got sacked six times last week. Let's start thinking about keeping extra people in. Tight end stays in. If I have a fullback or the running back, they stay in and help me block. Maybe not as many receivers in a pattern. Anything to try and slow down that pass rush. The Bengals with two extra DBs, a nickel look on third. Blanket in the passing lanes. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. He'll buy some time right. He can run for it, and he will. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. Seven, seven, our score after one. More time, seven to seven. <laughs> On first down, he'll drop to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The pass. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. A good decision in the end to pull it and run, get some nine yards at a first. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got something about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. Now a handoff looking right. And he's going to be met at about the 43. A gain of three, second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. And he's taken down inside the 30. 15 yards on the play, first down. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. First down, he'll drop to throw it. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Manning. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Second and four. Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. That's good for a Cleveland Brown. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Back to throw here. The quick slant caught. Yeah, the Browns are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. From the two now, second and goal. Brings up second and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And he's in. Touchdown, Browns. A great effort there. His 14th touchdown now on the year. And the Browns have taken the lead. 
people always talk about one of his biggest strengths running the football vision and he found the spot there went into the end zone you're exactly right about that and wasn't just the vision right once he saw the gap decisiveness made up his mind and about the power to finish the play not only did he get good blocking he created his own space as well Got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will make it into the end zone. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. At their own Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. Broke a tackle, but not much room there ultimately. Just up past the 25 and no further. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? A gain of 13. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now back to throw. Throw right side is hauled in by the tight end, Gonzalez. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he is across midfield from 149 to the other 49. A gain of just two. 49-yard line. A gain of two. Brings up. Here's second and eight. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A gain of 12. First down, Cincinnati. They'll look to throw now on first down. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Ten more there and another first down. It's a gain of 10. And the Bengal from the shotgun. He'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. Second and two. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. First down, Bengals. Back to throw again, and it's caught. And the Bengals are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. And a lot of people ask the same. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. It's the fullback. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Well, they weren't messing around. First and goal, they don't do anything fancy. They just go to the fullback right away. I like how you phrase that because oftentimes they come back to the fullback when it's late in the down and distance count, right? In this case, first down, let's go get it right now. And he got it six points on the board. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a Bengals score. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. 
fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Browns take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. He would have kept it on the ground. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is, possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. It's now third down and nine. Out of the gun now on third down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. That was just a good example of taking what the defense gave him. No one opened downfield, knew where his safety valve was, swung it out to him. He gets upfield and picks up the first down. Well done all the way around. Back to throw now on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The pass. Seven yards, the pick up there. Six yard line. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three. The throw right sideline here is complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. It's a first down on a gain of 10. First and 10 at the 44 yard line. They'll look to throw again. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A gain of four. It's now second and six. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Quarterback taken down and sacked. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth. Both of these offenses having their way so far. So maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely. And that sack, finally a first step in the right direction for a stop. The Browns on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is going to be third and 13. They'll look to throw here. Throw left side complete. That's Young. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. A gain of six yards. It's fourth down. send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away and here's a very low line drive almost whiffed on it and now where will the side judge stop his walk that's the question he says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17 yard line the Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field the last possession these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown and now they'll have a chance to move out in front yeah let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back the special teams went out there handled things they've got it they've got momentum i know they're eager to get out there and put it on display they go over the middle and it's complete to start the drive and they'll get him down here at the 23. The six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. 11 yards there, first down. Three-wide-yard line. A gain of 11 on the play. First down, Cincinnati. Ball up 
to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. The throw on the quick slant going to be complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Out of bounds at the 47-yard line. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. A loss of six yards. And it's third down. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. We can make this one pretty simple. Rock the ball of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? The Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Browns set to take over, and the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. They'll look to throw here on first down. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. The pass. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. Looking middle, and that's complete. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. To the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. And they try to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. Brings up third down and three yards to go. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to loft one deep over the middle. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. That's the end of the first half. So we've hit halftime all even at 14 apiece. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, bye weeks, they're over. We've once again got a full slate of games to get to as we take you around the NFL here in Week 12. We'll begin with as good a rivalry as there's been the last decade or so. Baltimore playing host to their AFC North rivals, Pittsburgh. And it's the Ravens out in front as that game moves towards halftime. Lamar Jackson with three touchdown passes. From there, we head up to Foxborough to check on the Patriots at home at Gillette Stadium. And you can see they trail the visiting Buffalo Bills 
in that ball game. The Bills seem to be on their way to what would be a good victory. Finally, let's get right to the center of the U.S. map and check in on the Chiefs at home in Kansas City. And they trail the visiting Denver Broncos in that one. The Broncos looking to sew that one up, and they look to be in pretty good shape. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Bengals take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Back to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Hayes. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Right back to him for 10 more and a first. First down on first down. Wesley. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. He's brought down. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Brings up second. They'll keep it on the ground. Wesley. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. And it's third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. The pass complete to number 38. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? First down, Wesley, and only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Another carry for the running back. He was brought down at the 26. Second and nine now. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. The pass. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yes. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And his pass incomplete. The pass. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals have broken our tie as they take the lead. 
A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is in a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. A 10-play drive that time, and it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded inside the five. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Browns take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave him great field position, turned it to six points. So they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. The ball carrier. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. They'll roll him out, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The quarterback sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> and a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. He'll look to throw. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. The quarterback taken down and sacked. Charles, not to point fingers, but how much of this goes on the shoulders of the offensive line? Well, look at the six sacks last week. That's the fourth in this game. Definitely the bulk of it does go on the offensive line. That's what they're tasked with doing, keeping their quarterback upright and clean in the pocket. But I think they have to look at, okay, are we bringing in extra people? Is the ball out of the quarterback's hands quick enough? There are a few other factors they'd have to look at to try and help out, but you're exactly right. It starts with the O-line. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. At their own 21-yard There he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if we can drive the bus here again on this drive. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up the second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. If they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. He'll look to throw. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. The quarterback, yes. 
sack. Well, someone's closing in on the league lead in sacks. He came into the game in the top five. Now you add two more to his total. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. A well-executed 22-yard gain. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Looking to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they've stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. They're going to look to throw. Over the middle, complete. It's Young. And he's going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. here to his running back and down inside the 15 shy of the 10 that's good for another 14 yards and it's a cleveland first down that's what love the run right there this guy's known for his quickness but also for his speed and he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking always talk about slot receivers and they're usually known as quicker than fast in this case we've got a guy who's quick and fast and he used it to great advantage from down at the 12, it's first and 10. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down this time at the five yard line. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the five yard line. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. He'll drop to throw. No, bottled up. Fumble. It's out. It's loose. The quarterback sack. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession.
Now for the field goal Eddie try, Pinheiro. here's Eddie Pinheiro. Field goal. A 28-yard attempt. And in his 15th season, he's able to get this one to go. And that'll bring him back within four. Makes the score. Bengals 21. Browns 17. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest. Let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. They're on 23-yard line. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? That's what he's done here in this one so far. That catch good for five. It's third down. A five-yard pickup on the play. And it's third down. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked off at the 33. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And that one gives him a three-point lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. And a big loss here as he's taken down. That's the second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second at a country mile. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. Brandon, it certainly looked like they had that play defended well, but it still almost worked. Got it to the running back. He wound up getting really good yardage out of it, but it was third and long, and they were able to rally and stop it before he could get to the marker. The Bengals bring out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Nifty running by Beckham. A 40-yard punt, give him three on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. 
Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent, just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader, making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged, how big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far, don't like that. I just want you to know, are you agreeing with me? That's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. At the 44 yard line. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. <laughs>